Yesterday at Trent Bridge, Nick Knight sustained what could have been a very serious injury, but fortunately it turned out to be less than that. Kenny Benjamin was the batsman. He was wearing a cap at uh, Silly Point rather than a protective helmet, and the ball caught him flush on the back of the head. Jack Russell was the man rushing to his assistance, as did all the other players. Well, uh, Knight was taken off on a stretcher and then by ambulance to hospital. But he was at the ground this morning and Tony Lewis talked with him. Well, Nick, uh, welcome back to the ground. That's the first thing. I know viewers in the Caribbean who are watching and all the British viewers were very pleased to see you back and looking fit. It's nice to be back. Uh, you know, it was a bit of a blow, but I always felt in control. Even when I got hit yesterday, I still knew where I was and what was happening and uh, never, never felt sort of out of control. And, once I had a bit of a rest, I felt okay, actually. It looked very bad. What do you remember about the actual stroke? Well, I can remember everything. He just sat back, I think Benjamin just sat back a bit and uh, sliced it slightly and uh, you know, got, it, got it up into the head region, which is unusual for that position because you're so close to the bat that the chances of getting the trajectory up into the head area is, you know, is very remote. So, you know, it was because he sat back and sliced it that he was able to get it up there. But, you know, as I say, I can remember everything and, um, you know, I don't feel too bad. A very lucky young man, I can tell you, uh, that could have been extremely serious. We're going to join it now in the first over. It's the fourth ball, Courtney Walsh uh, is the bowler, and he's coming in to bowl to Graham Thorpe. No runs have been added. There's all sorts of shouts there, but not a murmur from uh, the man who's going to make the ultimate decision. Here to be any actual deflection that's just gone straight on there to the wicket keeper. We did see yesterday that Thorpe had thumped his pad with his bat for a similar type appeal, and I have a feeling we might see precisely the same thing there with the inside edge of the bat hitting against the pad. Nilly is very well bowled. It got uh, Thorpe into a terrific tangle there. Whoa! No ball call, and uh, it's gone for four. Double injury. Uh, even the most equable temperament sometimes give way to frustration. Well, there's an air of finality about that for Michael Atherton. Very well bowled. The ship has got that to go away from him in the air, and I reckon it's probably gone even further on pitching. And it drew Atherton into the stroke. Good catch by Courtney Brown. Well, I was just saying how important a uh, force he is for the West Indies, Ian Bishop. He's got that height, a very tall man. And he's able to move the ball and he was just beautifully bowled. It's caught him, brilliantly caught him. And alas, poor Craig White goes for one, a firm push into a ball that was bouncing. Beautifully anticipated by the man in short square leg. Sherwin Campbell, 125 for four. Suddenly this game is getting a strange proportion. White just playing that one with the inner part of the bat, top of the pad, and Campbell taking another one of his seemingly endless good catches. He's really a good fieldsman, Campbell, in any position. 125 for four, and it'll be interesting to see who comes in next. <laughs> As to be Jack Russell. <laughs> well, a good bit of cricket by the West Indians. They've been keen right from the start of play. They see that there is a just a slender chance that this game might be turned quickly in their favor. Good shot. Simple and very effective.
Yes, this was a good shot. Just pitched about leg stump, short of a very good length, and just pulled the rung, tucked the rung by the wicket keeper. Oh, beautifully bowled. Jack Russell is out. <laughs> Kenny Benjamin has this lovely knack of striking very quickly. Ian Bishop and Courtney Walsh have done some good work this morning. This is Kenny Benjamin's first over. And once again, he's picked up a wicket in his first over of the day. That's a lovely shot from Graham Thorpe. Best shots uh, so often are ones played simply, just like that. Caught. Nick Knight has gone. And now we have an interesting situation. Kenny Benjamin has done the trick. First of all, he picked up Jack Russell, and now he's got uh, Nick Knight. And there will be a few tremors in the England dressing room. All sorts of possibilities opening up there for the West Indian captain. He was into it from the word go this morning, called on a big effort from uh, Walsh and Bishop, and he got that. Also from Benjamin. and tension of a test match that was brilliantly done oh fine shot <laughs> nothing wrong with that at all from Graham Thorpe it was a nice juicy offering short outside the off stump and a great example a perfect cut shot right on top of the ball Well, it's through and out. A swish from Graham Thorpe, just a little under edge. That's a disappointing end to what has been another good innings from Graham Thorpe. Although the ball was short enough from Courtney Walsh, it didn't bounce as Graham Thorpe expected. Courtney Brown takes yet another catch. Walsh is probably saying to himself, well, I've finally gotten him out. But this is a vital blow for the West Indian fast bowlers and for the West Indies team. And England 171 for seven. Dominic Falk in his fourth test match. And now this partnership takes on a very important aspect for England. And England leading by 194. I think that's one debt repaid. Quite a few more will be coming along, I think, between here and the end of this series. is going to get four runs for it. Well, this is a stroke of a batsman who is not intimidated. Oh, that's out as well. Kenny Benjamin has done it. Dominic Cork on his way very quickly. He won't have a chance to resume battle with Courtney Walsh today. And England are 176 for eight. 
And I think this bowling performance certainly puts Kenny Benjamin into the fra frame for man of the match. He had five wickets in the first innings. And he's now gotten his fourth wicket. Nicely taken. And he's out. Angus Fraser standing again. We'll have to have another quick look to make sure exactly what that came off. But Keith Arthurton dived forward at backward short leg. Clutched it just above the ground. What's the head go? Yep. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But terrific performance by Kenny Benjamin. Ten wickets in the match is... Uh, on this particular pitch as well. It's not like getting 10 wickets on that edge Baston pitch, which was uh, very difficult for batting. This is this is very flat for batting, except for the spinners. He's always very brave, is Angus Fraser, but uh, we can't expect the tail ender to do more than the top order batsman. First time that Kenny Benjamin has taken 10 minutes, 10 wickets in a match in first class cricket. batsman Richard Illingworth with a broken finger Watkinson uh, can keep him away from the strike two balls left in this over oh dear Well, I think he was so intent coming in quickly to save the single that it was a big surprise to him when it came full toss straight at him in the midriff. You know, he's obviously trying not to give an easy single so that Watkinson could keep the strike, and he dropped, well, I wouldn't say it was a dolly, but it was a straightforward catch, firmly hit. And he was expecting it. <laughs> Clever cricket from Watkinson. It means that uh, Illingworth has to face because uh, the four runs don't allow them to change over. But Watkinson knew that was going to be an opportunity to play the pull or the cut. Yes, I think we can safely say that one of his favourite shots is the pull. Anything short, he's going to have a little dart at it. Little inside edge there, off the bottom inside, but it didn't carry to the keeper this time. Oh, good shot for four. A tough trigger to Watkinson. 200 up for England. Shot to four by Ellingworth. <laughs> Last ball of the over. Four. Satisfying clunk into the boundary ropes and boards. Lead of 2.42. Ian Bishop is the man uh, on the balcony. purpose of not taking the new ball. It could be also that the West Indies have decided that they're not going to try to get these runs. They've suddenly lost a little bit of pep. The movement in the field suggests a little bit less urgency. <laughs> That'll remove uh, 
a bit more of the pep and zip. It was a good shot from uh, Mike Watkinson, who's now moved to 47. Now I'm not so sure that the effort is going to be sustained since Keith Atherton has been brought on, which suggests that the newer ball would not be taken. And perhaps the West Indies have decided to settle to just let this game peter out. Well, it's found the edge. It's got a great chance of finding the boundary too. Dan Raz cutting it off just inside the boundary. But Mike Watkinson goes through to 50. 51 not out to Michael Watkinson. That's been a very, very handy innings at a time when England had some problems to solve. I wonder Mike Atherton is out there applauding his Lancashire colleague. 51 not out of 75 balls. That's a good shot. Even Richard Dillingworth will take those offerings. This has been the main problem for Dan Raj all the way through his bowling in this test match. Too many deliveries, far too short. Yes. Applause for the 50 partnership. For the last wicket between Mike Watkinson and Richard Dillingworth. Worth has 12 of those. But the value very much to England there is the fact that he's still in and accompanying Mike Watkinson. Richard Dillingworth's been feeling the jarring in that finger, the finger that he broke, the index finger on his right hand. Even though the spinners have been bowling wonder if at T, uh, when they go there at 10 past, whether Mike Atherton might declare. There's no way the West Indies are going to win now, and we might not want Richie Dillingworth to go through any more pain. Good shot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that just about sums up the situation. Well, the shot deserved four. And it takes England up to 250, 251. Take that. No reason to ignore such choice offerings. And Mark Robinson took full advantage. That's gone a long, long way and very high. That's going to be maximum. So he makes the, makes the signal. One, two short, one, two, four, one for four, one for six. Well, the cafeteria is open. Great full of runs. 269 was the England score at tea time. The reason nine wickets declared appears there is that England actually went out with Watkinson and Illingworth, the batsman, after tea. But as soon as Michael Atherton saw who would be doing the bowling, and uh, it turned out to be a quick bowler, he called them back in. Illingworth had been hit on his broken hand in uh, the over just before tea, and Atherton wasn't inclined to risk him any further. The bowling figures. The West Indies waltzed two for 70, bowled magnificently in the morning. So too did Bishop, two for 50. And Benjamin, five for 69 to go with his five wickets in the first innings. And he bowled 25 overs and eight maidens. Dan Raj, a disappointment again, 54 from 15 overs. Other than 13 from 22, but uh, never posed any real danger. Well, that's the way the game stood after three innings. England, 440. 
and 269 after that declaration for nine wickets. West Indies, 417. West Indies need 293 to win. We join their innings now. It's the first ball of the second over. Dominic Cork is the bowler. Sherwin Campbell is taking strike. And there are two runs on the board. And Brian Lara has gone out onto the field in place of Stuart Williams. He's opening the innings. And for England, there are two subfielders, Paul Pollard and James Hinson. so quickly. It was short, admittedly. That's down. Flew very quickly to first slip. Angus Fraser will not be a happy man. That was a straightforward catch, really, a first slip, medium pace, they see it all the way. I mean, there's nothing much difficult there. Got him. Success for Angus Fraser. Brian Lara trying that shot just once too often. And so a bright and breezy 20 for Brian Lara. Comes to an end. The man on his way out is Shibnarayan Chanderpaul. He's gone, put behind. Dominic Cork is struck again. People all around the ground are leaping about. Those who may have um, laid their bets early in the day on Cork doing certain things, and Sherwin Campbell is the unfortunate victim. People looking at the uh, scorecard in years to come will think that was probably a pretty boring last day, but in fact it was within a whisker of being a very, very exciting afternoon. The West Indies finished at 42 for two, Lara made 20, Campbell 16, Chanderpaul and Brown were not out 5 and 1, respectively. The two captains, Richie Richardson and Michael Atherton, were with David Gower a little later, and David Gower first spoke with the England skipper. Michael, um, an interesting game in the end there. For so much of the day, for so much of the game, it looked like a batsman's game. But on the last day, some interesting moments again. Yeah, we were having a wobbly period in the last afternoon, um, but we saw it through and yeah, you know, it was always favourite to be a draw here with this wicket, um, and it was a fairly solid performance by us in the end. Even so, some good performances yourself with the bat, and Graham Hick left out at uh, Old Trafford, recalled here. Was that an innings of character by him? Yeah, he had to fill a, a hole left by Robin Smith. We needed a player with experience and some test caps under his belt. He fitted the bill perfectly. Pressure was on him, and he played well. And so all set up nicely for that final test match at the Oval then? Yeah, it should be a cracker. Hopefully the weather can hold. We'll get five uninterrupted days and um, it'd be nice to be a result. Right, Richie. Thanks, Michael. Richie, it's uh, an interesting last day there. Did you ever think you might actually win this match, having started to take wickets this morning? Yeah, the thing is with cricket, you never know what's going to happen. You just got to keep plugging away all the time. And um, um, after, well, matter of fact, yesterday we thought if we got if we had gotten a couple of wickets, we would have been in, in it, but um, it didn't work out. And then this morning we started plugging away again, hoping that we'd get a few wickets. We did get a few. And then, but the, the last um, two batsmen just keep hanging on and really um, put us out of the game. And all your players expected to be fit for the final one at the Oval? Well, I hope so. Um, we're struggling a bit, but um, we have, we've got guys who are accustomed to play with injuries and I'm hoping that they can be as fit as possible. All right, thanks very much to you both. The two captains there looking forward to the final test match at the Oval, and I'm looking forward to it as well. And I know Geoffrey Boycott is doing the same. For three hours today, the West Indies fast bowlers gave England a scare. Benjamin, Walsh and Bishop all got stuck in to the England batsmen and they wobbled. It was left to the injured Richard Illingworth with a broken finger to show courage and Mike Watkinson to show composure. Watkins' innings first under pressure when he had to steady the ship and then later on to take England to safety has probably earned him a tour to South Africa this winter. For England, going into the Oval Test match next, it can't be a happy time. They can't be very pleased with the way they batted today on a very good batting surface, nearly getting bowled out cheaply. West Indies, they will feel that they have the firepower to bowl England out on any surface and the oval will suit them. So maybe England will have to think of Devon Malcolm, 
Devon Malcolm we've not heard of for weeks, but he bowled South Africa out last year at the Oval and was England's saviour. Maybe he can do it again too.